Let's start with a single word. The word bank. I sat on the river bank. I withdrew money from the bank. How does a machine know the difference? How can a word's meaning literally change based on its neighbors? This is one of the hardest problems in AI. The solution is the attention mechanism. And my promise to you is simple. Give me 20 minutes and I will make attention click for you forever. This is your blueprint. First, we'll cover word embeddings, the static starting point. Then, query, key, and value, or QKV, the three roles of a word. After that, we'll dive into scaled dot product attention, the core formula. We'll also cover the causal mask. This is how to prevent cheating. And finally, multi-head attention, the final power-up. This is it. This is the engine behind ChatGPT. The entire secret is right here, in this formula and in this block of Python code. I know this looks like a nightmare, but you are going to understand every single part of this. We will build this formula and this exact Python code from absolute scratch, piece by piece, until it's not just clear, it's obvious. But to build this engine, we have to start with the fuel it runs on. Let's start with a simple, brutal fact. A neural network cannot understand the word cat. It can't understand river, bank, or money. It only understands one thing. One thing. Lists of numbers. That's it, which we call vectors. So our first job is to convert every single word into its own unique vector. But how do we do that? With a simple lookup table called an embedding layer. Think of it like a giant spreadsheet. As you can see here, you have a word, which acts like a row ID, and then you have the vector, which are the columns. For example, the word cat might have an ID of three, and its vector is this list of numbers, 0 0.12, minus 0 0.45, and so on. And bank, with an ID of seven, gets its own list of numbers. The NN dot embedding layer in PyTorch is exactly this. It's a learnable dictionary. Let's see this in action. I promise, the code is simpler than you think. First, we import torch and torch.nn. Then, let's set up a tiny configuration for our example. We'll set a vocab size to 10, meaning our dictionary only has 10 words. And we'll set n embed, that's the embedding dimension, to four. This means each word will be represented by a vector of size four. Now the layer itself. We create a variable called token embedding table, and we set it equal to nn.embedding, passing in our vocab size and our embedding dimension. This is our giant spreadsheet. Okay, let's look up the vector for the word with ID equals three. We create a tensor for our input ID, and then we just pass that ID to our table. The variable vector now holds the result. When we print it out, what do we get? And the output is just a list of numbers, a vector. You can see it right there. The vector for word ID three is a tensor containing four numbers, just like we asked. Now here's a key point. At first, these vectors are completely random. They don't mean anything. But as the model trains, it learns the best vector for every word. It intelligently arranges them in this high dimensional space. But this simple lookup has one massive fatalog flaw. It is static. The vector for a word is the exact same, regardless of the words around it. This is our villain. This is the problem we need to defeat. Let's go back to our bank example. I sat on the river bank. I withdrew money from the bank. As you can see in this table, the context is different. In one case, it's about a river. In the other, it's about money. But the word is the same, bank. So the lookup process is identical. We just grab the vector at index seven from our embedding table. And what's the result? The resulting vector is identical. This is the core limitation. Our starting vectors are context-free. They are deaf to the conversation happening around them. This brings us to the central question of this entire video. The question that changes everything. How can we dynamically modify a word's vector using the context from its neighbors? The answer is the attention mechanism. We let the words talk to each other. The attention mechanism isn't magic. It might feel like it, but it's not. It's a system that allows every word to look at its neighbors and create a new context-aware vector for itself. It lets a word like bank literally ask the question, am I next to river or money? Let's build a powerful mental model for this. The analogy I want you to hold in your head is this, a conversation to resolve ambiguity. 
Let's use the sentence, crane lifted steel. The question is obvious, right? Is it a bird or a machine? To figure this out, the word crane will perform three steps. First, it will ask a question about itself. Second, it will find relevant neighbors by checking for matches. And third, it will absorb information from the most relevant ones. Now, to make this conversation possible, we derive three new special purpose vectors from each word. You can see them in this table. They are called the query, the key, and the value. The query, or Q, is what I'm looking for. Think of it as a word's search query, or its question. The key, or K, is what I have. It's like a word's label, or keyword. And finally, the value, or V, is what I'll give you. This is the actual information, or substance, of the word. Here's the core idea in one sentence. A query from one word finds the best matching key in another, and then pulls in that word's value. Let's see this with the crane example. Look at the initial state. Let's imagine crane starts out as an ambiguous vector, say 0 0.7, 0 0.7. But lifted and steel are very machine-like, right? Maybe something like 0 0.1, 0 0.9. Okay, step one, score. The query from crane probes the key of every other word. We do this using a dot product. A high score means a strong match. So the score between crane and lifted, high. They have a strong machine-like alignment. The score between crane and steel, also high for the same reason. And the score between crane and itself, let's call it medium. It just aligns with its own ambiguous self. Step two, normalize. This is about deciding who to listen to. The raw scores are converted to percentages using a function called softmax. So the attention weights for crane might look something like this. Crane gets 20%, lifted gets 40%, and steel gets 40%. It has decided to listen mostly to lifted and steel. And now for the final step. Step three, aggregate. This is where Crane absorbs the information. It creates its new vector by taking a weighted average of all the value vectors, just like you see in this formula. The new vector for Crane is 0.2 times the value of Crane plus 0.4 times the value of lifted plus 0.4 times the value of steel. And the result, an updated vector. Look at this. The original crane was at 0 0.7, 0 0.7. But the updated crane, after this conversation, is now something like 0 0.3, 0 0.8. It has become much more machine-like. The other vectors, lifted and steel, remain unchanged for now. And just like that, the conversation worked. The ambiguous crane vector was transformed into an unambiguously machine-like one. This three-step process is the absolute heart of attention. Memorize it. 1. Score. That's the query matching with keys. 2. Normalize. That's using softmax to get the weights. And 3. Aggregate. Taking the weighted sum of the values. Alright, let's execute the plan. We're going to translate that conversation we just had into ruthlessly efficient matrix math. Why matrices? Because it lets us process every single word in the sentence at the same time. It's pure speed. This formula, which might have looked a little scary before, is now our map. Attention of QKV equals softmax of QK transpose over the square root of DK all times V. Every single piece corresponds to a step we just learned. So let's build this from scratch. You will see every single number change, every shape transform, no black boxes. Here's the setup for our attention from scratch. We're going to use a tiny example sentence, just three tokens, so t equals three. And each token is a simple 2D vector, so c equals two. The first thing we need is our input. Let's call it x. These are our static starting embeddings. The shape is batch, tokens, channels. So for us, that's one, three, two. In PyTorch, we'll import torch, and torch.nn.functional as f and math. And here's our input x, torch.tensor with the values you see here. One vector for token one, one for token two, and one for token three. Okay, step one, get Q, K, and V. Now in a real model, these are learnable projections. But for simplicity right now, to see the mechanism clearly, we'll just set them all equal to our input X. So Q, K, V equals X, 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 easy. Now for step two, the score. This is the Q, K transpose part of the formula, the heart of the conversation. We take our Q with a shape of one, three, two, and we matrix multiply it by the transpose of K. So that's 1, 3, 2 at 1, 2, 3. The result? A 1, 3, 3 matrix of scores. 
Let's run the code. Scores equals Q at K dot transpose, negative two, negative one. And here's what we get. The raw scores, our attention matrix. Look at this. It's the entire conversation, raw. Row zero shows the scores from token one's query against all the keys. Column zero shows the scores of all the queries against token one's key. It's all there. Next, step three, scale. This is that little divide by the square root of DK part. It's a small but crucial detail that helps stabilize training. It just prevents the scores from getting too large and overwhelming the model. Our DK is the size of our key vectors, which is two. So we just write scaled underscore scores equals scores divided by math dot square root of DK. Step four, normalize, softmax. This is where the model decides who to listen to. It turns those raw, scaled scores into clean percentages. Each row will now sum to one. So we'll say weights equals f dot softmax of our scaled scores along the last dimension. And bam, look at these attention weights. Each row now sums to one. For example, look at the second row for token two. It has decided to build its new self by paying 36% attention to token one, 36% attention to itself, and 28% attention to token three. It's a weighted distribution of focus. And that brings us to the final step. Step five, Baragus the values. This is the weights at V part. We use our new attention weights to create a weighted average of the value vectors. This is the actual information transfer. We just multiply our weights matrix by our V matrix. Output equals weights at V. And here is our final output, a tensor of shape one, three, two, with the new updated vectors. Done. We started with our static input X, and we produced a new tenants output of the exact same shape. But this new tensor is different. It's been transformed. Each vector inside it has absorbed information from its neighbors according to those attention weights. They are now context aware. Here's the entire journey summarized by the tensor shapes. We started with our input 1, 3, 2. The Q, K, and V projections kept that shape. Then for the scores, Q at K transpose, the shape exploded into a 1, 3, 3 matrix. We scaled it, applied softmax, still a 1, 3, 3 matrix. And then in the final step, weights at V, we multiplied that by our 1, 3, 2 value tensor to get right back to our original shape, 1, 3, 2. It's incredibly elegant. This is the engine, the core of the transformer. But this powerful engine has two serious flaws, flaws that make it completely unusable for a real language model like GPT. To make this work in a real production model, we need two critical upgrades. First, causality. We have to stop the model from cheating by looking into the future. And second, parallelism. We need to make this conversation way richer by having many of them at once. All right, let's tackle the first one. I call it the don't look ahead problem. Think about how a model like GPT actually works. It generates text one word at a time. So if you give it the input, a cat sat, its job is to predict the very next word. But here's the rule. Its decision must be based only on the words it has already seen. It cannot be allowed to see the answer it's supposed to generate. And right now, our current attention mechanism is a total cheater. So what's the solution? It's called the causal mask. We are going to surgically modify the attention score matrix, and we're going to do it by setting the scores for all future tokens to negative infinity. But why negative infinity? This is a brilliant technical trick. Remember, the softmax function is based on e to the x, and e raised to the power of negative infinity is basically zero. No attention means no information flow. The cheating is stopped. Simple as that. Let's walk through this step by step. You'll recall our scaled underscore scores matrix. Now, step one, we create a mask. We'll set our sentence length t to three. Then we create the mask using torch.trill, that's T-R-I-L, on a tensor of ones with shape t by t. When we print that out, we get this lower triangular matrix you see on the slide. The ones show the connections that are allowed. The zeros show the future connections we need to block. Okay, step two, apply the mask. We'll call masked underscore scores equals scaled underscore scores dot masked underscore fill. Inside, we say wherever the mask is equal to zero, replace that value with floating point negative infinity. And look at the result. In the scores after masking tensor, the upper right triangle is now all negative infinity. The future is gone. Finally, step three. We just rerun softmax on these new scores. Causal underscore weights equals f dot softmax on our masked scores along the last dimension. And there it is, the final causal weights. Look at that beautiful matrix. 
It worked perfectly. The first row shows that token 1 can only see itself. The second row shows token 2 can see itself and token 1, but not token 3. Information now flows strictly from the past to the present. Problem solved. All right, on to the next problem. Here's the thing. A single conversation, a single attention calculation, it just isn't enough to capture the insane richness of language. So, what's the solution? Multi-head attention, or as I like to call it, mini conversations at once. It's like having a committee of experts looking at the sentence, but each from their own unique perspective. For example, head one might specialize in tracking verb-object relationships. Head two could be the pronoun expert, figuring out that it refers to the ball. And maybe head three is responsible for handling those really long distance dependencies across the sentence. So, what does the mechanism look like? If you look at this diagram, you can see the whole flow. We start with our input Q, K, and V. The first thing we do is split them up into multiple heads. Q1, K1, V1, Q2, K2, V2, and so on. Then, all those heads run their own attention calculation in parallel. Once they're done, we merge or concatenate all their outputs back together. And finally, we run that combined result through a final projection layer to get our final output. So you might be asking, how do we do all this efficiently? The answer is with some very clever tensor reshaping. Let's use a real example. GPT-2 uses an embedding size C of 768 and 12 heads. That means each head has a dimension of 64. So, step one is to split the tensor using the view method. We start with our query tensor, Q, with a shape of batch one, sequence length three, and embedding size 768. We then reshape C into N underscore head and head underscore dim. So we call Q dot view with one, three, 12, 64. The new shape is batch, time, number of heads, and head dimension. But wait, there's another part to step one. This is the critical trick. We transpose the tensor to get it ready for parallelism. We take our Q underscore multi underscore head tensor and we call transpose with dimensions one and two. This swaps the T and N underscore head dimensions. The new shape is now batch, number of heads, time, and head dimension. By bringing the head dimension forward like this, it acts like a second batch dimension, letting us compute all 12 heads at once. It's brilliant. Okay, so after we run the parallel attention calculations, we get to steps three and four, merge and project. It's basically the reverse process. We have our output per head, which has that shape of batch, number of heads, time, head dimension. We just transpose it back and then merge the heads using view to get back to our original 768 dimension. By the way, that contiguous call you see on the slide is just a little memory optimization, nothing to worry about. Finally, we project the combined insights through one last linear layer, which we're calling C underscore proj. So by having these multiple parallel conversations, the model can analyze the input text from many different perspectives all at the same time. This, this is what makes attention so incredibly powerful. All right, this is it. Let's assemble everything we've learned into production ready code. Do you remember this code? We saw this at the very beginning, the causal self-attention module. 20 minutes ago, this might have looked like a complete black box, a nightmare even. But now, it's just a map. Every single piece has a purpose. We understand it. Let's walk through it one last time. Look at the code. First, the problem we're solving. We take a static input X and we produce a context-aware output Y. That's our whole mission. Next, the intuition. That QKV conversation we talked so much about, it starts right here with the C underscore ATD linear layer, and it finishes with the final attention weighted sum, ATT at V. Then we have the engine, the mathematical heart of this whole thing. It's that core Q at K dot transpose logic we built from scratch all the way back. And finally, the upgrades. The masked underscore fill gives us causality, so our model can't cheat and look into the future. And all those view and transpose operations, that's how we create the parallel heads we just discussed. This causal self-attention module is the single most important component of modern large language models. It is the engine that drives understanding in every transformer block, which are stacked over and over to create models like GPT that are literally changing our world. The magic is gone. It's been replaced by elegant, understandable engineering. You get it now. Attention has clicked.